right? Okay, so we're gonna start. So first of all, nice to meet you all and thank you for showing up. I know it's uh, after market close and some of you are also, it's late uh, in different places in the world. Uh, so the goal of this session today is uh, really help you guys leverage our platform and share some example on, for example, how Patrick uses the data. Uh, there's been a lot of questions in the chat, so we want to be able to answer everything. Uh, but the first step is really a lot of you are new. The, you guys joined last week with the futures data. So we want to make sure that uh, you guys are provided with the tools that you need to use the data and leverage it. So uh, I'm going to give you maybe a background about myself. Then I'm, I'm going to let you do an introduction, Patrick, about your experience. Then we're going to go into very brief demo on basic of navigation, how to get the data, how to get the levels. We're going to go into the trading view indicator. We now have two indicators and we're going to show you what they do and how you can plot different levels on different charts. Um, then we're going to show you how to request the futures data. There's been a lot of questions on how to request the data using different tickers. Uh, Patrick is then going to go into the blind spot strategy and how he uses the data. And then we're going to answer any questions you, you might have. Uh, so for those who don't know me, I'm a uh, founder and CEO of MentorQ. Uh, previously, I have an experience in finance starting at Bloomberg. Uh, then I worked for an alternative data company. And then in 2021, we decided really to leverage the same approach used by large institutions. And we started developing MentorQ. And now we are providing you know, actionable insights, leveraging the same approach that large banks are using. So data-driven, simplifying complex data and giving you access to actionable insights. Pass it on to you, Patrick. Yeah, so um, first of all, uh, welcome everyone. We are a lot of members, so sorry that I don't say hello to everyone, but hello. Um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, my name is Patrick. Um, I'm, I'm from Dubai. Some people of you maybe know me from the Chat with Traders podcast, um, episode 260 or episode 262. Um, where I was sharing everything about my life, everything about my trading career. Um, but to make it short, um, I'm trading professional since 2006. Um, what I mean with professional, I take an earning from this. Uh, most of the time, I'm working only with investors. Sometimes I'm trading my own personal account. Um, yeah, what I'm trading is most of the time futures, stocks, and indices. But I never trade options bitcoins yeah but i'm here so <laughs> it's a place for options and this is why i will share you later um why i'm really like this and why i'm really enjoy uh mentor q and how i leverage this yeah uh, thank you patrick and uh yeah and so for you who have been with us since the beginning beginning um we didn't have the trading rooms when we started last year so we kind of listened to your feedback and we kind of started having different trading rooms with different strategies to help you uh, have like access to people like Patrick and Doc and Tim and the other guys uh, so that they can give you their take on how they read the market and how they use our data. So today we're going to talk about how Patrick uses the data, but we're going to have more session with the other guys as well in the future. So stay tuned on that. But before we go into that, I'm going to um, share my screen. Second. All right. Okay. Can you guys see? Yes. All right. So let's go over a really simple way of navigating the data, right? So we currently are developing, are starting to develop a web app, but right now the data is delivered through this. So a lot of a lot of you might find it, you know, app navigators <clears throat> and channels. And so we want to just make it as easy as possible. So starting from the top, you have access to some of the free channels. These are like the free members. The premium members would also have access to the, the data in the premium section. But essentially, you have uh, two types of channels within the, the server. One is what we call auto post bots, which are posting data once a day at 6.30 a.m. for uh, stocks and indices and at 5 a.m. for futures. So the goal here is really to leverage data. So if you already, if you trade SPX and if you trade QQQ, you can now access this channel and you can get the data you need. Those are all the models that we have. Uh, they are divided in order and then we can answer question why this is. But essentially here you, you can get the trading view text, 
Here you can see the net gamma exposure chart, the multi-expiration, the matrix, and so on. So the three assets that you also receive in the newsletter, you will find it at the top here. And then you also have other autopost channel here for the most rated asset, like NDX, SPY, Apple, NVIDIA, and so on. We obviously don't have a channel for every asset because otherwise it would be too many. So if you don't see the stock that you care about here, or you don't see the asset, there's no problem because you can access our query bot, right? So um, going on the query bot, you can now come here. And uh, first, the first step is if you don't know what the commands, what commands are available, you can type help. This will give you a full list of all the different commands that you can uh, that you can answer through the bot. And then uh, you obviously have 50 or plus commands. We also have documentation on the website. So if you go under our resources section here under guides, um, here we have created a getting started section. So you have a setup guide here with all the links that you need to get started. Here we go through all the different, you know, how to set up Discord, uh, how to get the data. We have uh, links to videos and so on. So I, I encourage everyone to go through this one. Uh, but also we have um, the guide here with the bot commands. So here we describe in more details every command that is available. We also have a video. We have a product demonstration here. So there's video tutorials. Uh, so here you can go through all of them. But uh, let me show you how to do that. So we get a lot of questions on, I'm trying to request data and I don't get any answer. So the step to do that is really to type the forward slash command and then you know start typing a keyword, right? So if you're looking at uh, trading view, so you can start typing TV, right? Which is the code for trading view. And you will see that you have uh, um, a lot of different commands. Some of these are list commands. So you can get, for example, a list of the levels for all the healthcare companies that we have in the system, right? So we, we pre-can a list of companies so that you can then copy this level directly into TradingView. Otherwise, you can type in other keywords like JAX, right? So we can go and get the net JAX chart. So you click on the command and the ticker word will appear. So now you can then start typing the ticker and then um, you're basically, the chart will appear. As you can see, there's arrows at the back, at the bottom, right? The arrows allow you to go back in time and go back of up to five days. So I can click on the arrow back here and I can see um, the, the net gags for the 16th. And then I can go back again and I can go on the 15th. So the goal of, of this is really to compare how market positioning have changed over time so that you can understand how people are positioning themselves on options uh, and how they change day by day. And that could help you, you know, get a better feel of the market. And we can do the same thing on all the other commands. If we type in the matrix and we type in again, ticker, uh, we can also go back in time here and understand how the matrix have changed, you know, like, are we in positive gamma? Are we in negative gamma and so on? Um, within the premium section, um, we also have our models. So our CTS model are here. Uh, again, these are posted at 6.30 a.m. in the morning. Uh, so the, you will you will see a refresh in the morning and as well with our volatility control fund model. They are also here. And again, we also have a lot of documentation. So let's go through what you have here. We have about 100 plus guides um, on any topic ranging from the importance of option trading, uh, the trading view indicator, all the data on our levels. So you can find everything here. Uh, future options, what are we providing on futures, blind spot strategy, which Patrick will talk about in more details. Why is the option market so important? Then we have our models here. So you can find more information about the CTAs models here, um, about all the other models. And then we have strategies at the bottom. And then we also have case study here. So again, there's a lot of documentation. Everything is available under resources and guides. Um, if you guys have any questions on this, we can also go through that, but that's, that's very important. Uh, now let's go into how to request the data for TradingView, right? So there are different ways that you can do that. The first is go to go in the auto post channel and scroll down and find the TradingView command, which is here. You can simply, uh, select copy, and then we're going to go into the indicator and paste that into the input section. Another option is leveraging the bot. So through the bot, as discussed, we can type in the 
to letter TV that stands for training view. We have different commands that are already predefined. So for example, uh, the semis, TV semis will give you a list of semiconductor stocks, financial, again, financial stocks, energy. Uh, we also have uh, commands for futures. So TV bonds will give you a list of the four bond futures that we have, as well as TLT. We also have this command that will give you uh, all the uh, asset that Patrick will then use to convert the levels and apply them to the NQ or the ES chart. So again, one command, you can copy the level simply by selecting them, and then we're going to go into the indicator. Another option is to use the list commands. If you type in uh, like forward slash list, we can then start typing our tickers. So I can type in up to five tickers. Uh, space, uh, you can uh, uh, use the comma or semicolon, they should work. Um, and then simply type the tickers here, press enter, and then the levels will appear. And again, copy them, then we're going to go into the indicator. So we have two indicators for our premium community. One is the mentor queue levels, and one is the mentor queue levels futures. Uh, eventually, we're going to only have one, but we are working on some developments. So at the moment we have two. So I would suggest as a best practice to leverage the mentor queue levels for stocks and indices, and then the futures one for futures or to convert um, the asset as we will show you in the blind spot strategy. So essentially, uh, if we go into the indicator, uh, we can click on the settings here. Let's see. Okay. One second, guys. Mm. All right. So within the settings, uh, let's go over the settings very quickly, and then we're going to answer some questions as well. So here you have three. Um, within the Q levels one, you have three boxes. Within the futures one, you have four. So you can paste the input that you downloaded from the bot and you can paste it in any of these boxes. It doesn't matter the order, they have the same functionality. Uh, every box has a limit of about 4,000 characters, which is about 10 tickers per input. Uh, this is a training <laughs> limit, so you can upload up to probably 30 tickers. We're gonna increase that limit soon in the new indicator. Uh, but just as a, you know, as a, a, a as a, an idea if you don't find the level is because there is a character limit here. So just use the three boxes that you have. Uh, some question that we get is I don't see the labels on the chart. And the reason could be that your uh, training view settings or your, um, your desktop settings uh, put the level on the right hand side. So you have a label offset setting here that you can use to uh, move the levels to the right or to the center. So if you don't see the levels, they are most likely on the right of the chart. So just simply scroll to the right. Uh, you can then change the offset. You can then change the offset here and modify that. You can change the chart label here. Um, we're going to go into the settings a bit later when Patrick talks about uh, blind spot. You also have the ability to add a table to the chart. To add the table, simply click on uh, uh, table text size here and simply add normal, small, or tiny. If we do normal, the table will appear. You can also define the position, this, define the orientation, and also the sorting. This is important because uh, some of our users want to like rank the levels uh, based on ascending or descending value or alphabetical order. So I can do that. And I can then, um, as you will see, this will change based on the distance, the spot price. Uh, so this is very useful because it allows you to uh, see the levels when they're getting hit. How is the price moving towards the level? So it will make it easier for you to, to monitor this. Um, okay. Then let's go in the futures indicator. The so the difference between really the the Q levels and the futures is really uh, there's a few differences. First, you have an extra input box. Second, you now have the ability to add the right data, so the right levels to uh, on SPX, SPY, and the X and QQQ, right? So this is really the main difference. And then you have also uh, RTY and DYA. All the rest is really the same. 
another difference is really that the, now the levels will be uh, in order. So now you can actually change the color of the level itself. So core resistance will always be, be the first one, then you have put support, and then you'll be able to also set up alerts here. I'll pause here for a second, and please let me know if you have any questions. Okay, let me paste the box and update. Uh, so I'm gonna reply to a question from Simon. Yes, yeah, so uh, as I said, Simon, in every box you can fit up to 4,000 characters, every um, every input. So this line is about 300 characters. So you can probably fit probably around 10, 12, 10, 12 tickers in one, one input box. Um, Pablo, the future indicator, you can find it in the training view section here uh, under uh, resources or sorry, under welcome you have the link here of the indicator. So you can add it to your favorites, similar to you how you did with the other one. And then you will be able to find it under favorites and you will have uh, the mentor key levels and the mentor key level future. So simply go on this core, go on the trading view uh, channel under the premium section under help and then add it to your favorite. All right. Uh, we get also some question, Fabio, about the option screener. Sure. Uh, I'll go into details about the option screen a bit later, if that's okay. Um, let's maybe like stick to the to the trading view stuff first. So within, so what Patrick basically has been doing within the blind spot strategy is uh, using the levels for correlated assets on assets that he trades, and in particular, he trades NQ and ES futures. So before we had the futures data, we we didn't really have the levels for futures. So we uh, created a way to convert the levels from the underlying asset. So that's what we did with the first indicator where you're only able to um, plot the NDX and the SPX levels. But since we launched the futures, we also now allow you to uh, add you know, SPX on ES, SPY on ES, NDX on NQ, and QQQ on uh, NQ as well. But obviously, uh, Patrick is now using a very interesting approach. So he's going to share uh, more information about how you do that and how do you upload the levels. So I'm, I'm going to pass it on to you, Patrick, and let you share as well. All right. Um, let me know uh, if someone doesn't know what are the blind spots. So then I uh, explain it very quickly, um, post it in, and I give you my monitor at this time. Uh, Fabio, can you assist me what the people write down? Uh, sure. Okay, Simon. Okay, I explain it. I explain it. So, yes, no, no worries. All right. So, what is the blind spot strategy? So, here's the background story. So, um, Steve and me, Steve was also in the futures room. We trading a long time ago together. We came from the Shetwith Traders community um, and we was trading one-to-one -one and, and all this stuff. And what we doing when we trading um, futures is we always looking for correlation. Uh, if we trading the NQ, we always looking for the SPY, the SPY, we're looking for the RIGs and some other ones. So we're looking for the correlation. So when we trading purely price action or we have some indicators on our side, then we want a second confirmation. And the second confirmation is sometimes um, the correlation. And uh, what is the really cool thing uh, with, um, with MetaQ and, and, um, is that we have the ability um, to use the gamma levels, what we get from the... Um, from the boot um, to convert this into the NQ. And um, I will share, you, share with this really quick. So the first step 
how the blind spot is working is we going to to our Discord. We we looking for our um, uh, for our levels what the boot gave us, and then um, I copy paste everything. I do this in in Google Keep. You can do this wherever you want, and this is the NDX code what we get from um, from the boot. Um, what, but what I'm doing is, um, here's the NDX. I add NDX, 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 and on all levels. So NDX. Patrick, yeah. Patrick maybe before we go into so maybe let's just uh, share why you're doing this. So there's, ah, okay. uh, yeah. yeah, because basically, so the indicator was designed to convert the levels from the underlying asset to the tradable future. So the indicator now allows you to add levels to NQ, PS, uh, RTY, and YM. Because before we had the futures data, those were the four futures or four assets that uh, users were trading. So they were looking at SPX, but in reality, they're trading, you know, yes, right? So how can we add those levels in one chart so that you can make it easier to do that? So right now, the indicator has some limitation that we are going to address in the next iteration where you're going to be able to actually do this automatically. So with the new indicator that is going to come up in a few weeks, you're actually going to be able to just simplify, convert the levels on any asset that you want. But uh, right now, the functionality available allows you to add levels uh, from NDX or QQQ to uh, NQ or from SPY and SPX to uh, ES. Right, so that's why Patrick is doing kind of like a manual process, uh, so that you can actually add uh, levels from different assets on the NQ chart. Yeah, that, that's correct. And um, why I, I why I find the uh, um, the blind spots really interesting is um, if you're looking only to the NDX or NQ, whatever you you're looking for, then then you see maybe like this. Um, and the X, boom, 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 put support, one day expected move, et cetera, et cetera. But if you add the other ones, um, then you get a bigger picture. And this is something what I'm calling the blind spots. And what the blind spots basically are, um, it's more like support and resistance. But um, the name like SPY, one day expected move, SPX, one day expected move, all the names behind of this, they give us some um, some feeling like about the strange from this uh, from the support and resistance. It's no more like pure support and resistance. It's like support and resistance based on the options um, mythology. Yeah. And and then we know exactly if this is a strong level or not. And this is also the reason. Uh, most of the time, people asking me, hey, Patrick, what ratio do you use? Or do you calculate your ratio daily? And my answer is always, no, I don't calculate the ratio daily. And here's the reason why. I'm not an options trader. I'm only a futures contract trader. And for me, it's all about support and resistance. But um, before I go... Um, into this, I check always if the support and resistance valid. So now we can see we have here uh, the NDX. I see, okay, the support and resistance is working. So my ratio on the NDX is valid. Then I go to the SPX. I see, okay, my support and resistance is working where we were based on the uh, past. Also good, my ratio is valid. And I do this with every level. I check the ratio daily. Um, if the support and resistance is valid, yes or not. I'm not calculating this daily. Uh, but if you be an options trader and you want the exactly uh, gamma levels on your chart, then of course you have to calculate the ratios daily. Fabio, correct? Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, yeah, there are different approaches. <coughs> The indicator allows you, and then I can I can show you how can I, you can actually calculate the ratio uh, using also trading view. But uh, as a best practice, you would want to like um, update or you know make sure that the ratio is in line with the difference in price. Typically, uh, during the trading session, the spread between you know uh, ES and SPX doesn't change much. 
Uh, so you want to adjust that maybe at the closing by taking the price of closing of yes at 4 p.m. and the price of closing of, of SPX at 4 p.m. And then you can adjust the ratio. And then the next morning, if there's a lot of volatility, you can adjust that um, during during the trading day. And then we can we can show you how you can calculate that. I can show you that actually. Uh, but the reason why you see four uh, charts on Patrick's screen is also important. So uh, you have the ability to add multiple uh, mentor Q levels indicator to the chart. So Patrick is using four or five. And the reason is that he's plotting different levels on NQ by using four different indicators. So I imagine Patrick that on the first one, you might have, you know, SPX. Um, on the second one, you probably have like, you know, QQQ uh, and so on. So. Yep. Yeah. And also why I have different indicators. So. So first of all, to be fair, it's all about how many indicators you can put on TradingView based on your subscription on TradingView, yeah? So I have the premium. Uh, for me, I have enough space to add uh, multiple uh, indicators. But what I really like is to see uh, that the QQQ and the NDX have the same color that I know. Okay, this is a pair who, who correlates together. It's the QQQ, it's the NDX, and it's the NQ. And for the... Uh, for the S&P, I have this in gray. So I have the SPY, I have SPX, and I have ES. So it's everything gray, gray so that I know exactly which is one. And yeah. it's it's much better for me, for my for my eyes. Um, and, and yeah, it's, it's more healthy. But um, I, we we get a question. I think this is a, this is a really good question. It's, um, uh, Patrick, what do you think is more valuable for NQ? NDX, SPX, by QQQ, or Pew data for NQ? This is a question what I really get mostly every day. And the answer is very simple. So let's take out everything. So this, this is how I start the day. So when I start, I start my day, um, when I put all the levels in my indicator, what I will show you later, um, I have my blank chart here. And now I'm opening uh, the NDX so that I see, is the NDX at the moment in the play? Yes, NDX is in the play because we have here the NDX one day expected move max. And below we have the NDX put support. It's proof in the play. Okay, I let on the NDX. Then I check SPX. Is SPX valid? Of course SPX is valid. Then I let SPX in, and then I go again, again, again. I, I look to the QQQ, QQQ is also valid. It's in the play at the moment. And then I'm looking um, to the SPY, also valid. So this is the answer. You look, I'm looking personally every day uh, what gamma level is in play. Sometimes not every level is in the play. Sometimes you see it's only NDX and SPY. Next day it's SPX and QQQ. But I will post this every day in the uh, futures trading room, what blind spots are in play. So sometimes you have plot on every levels because it's in the play. Sometimes you have only um, two levels, but this is how I'm going. I check every day what gamma level is in the play. And I think to answer uh, Marcel's question, so essentially you now have both the spot option chains and the future option chain. So just for, for those who don't know, like NQ has a separate option chain from NDX, for example, or QQQ. So there is a lot of value from having the ND, uh, you know, the NQ levels. So right now you can have both the, you know, the direct levels as well as the right levels as Patrick is, is doing. So really, um, it, it really depends on, on, on your strategy and how you want to use it. But there is definitely a lot of values in the uh, futures option chain that we now have, and you can access that. Yeah. And and the best advice uh, uh, from education side is um, test the levels. Test the levels on your chart. Look what is at the moment in the play, and then focus only on the levels who are in the play, and don't look to the other levels. Otherwise, it feels like, uh, yeah, it's it's like overwhelming. It's too much. But focus only on the levels who are in the in the game at the moment and who you who you are really interesting. 
Uh, maybe I can share my screen, Patrick, one sec. I'm yeah. going to show you how to calculate the ratio. We have a question yeah. from Italia. Uh, so to calculate the ratio, um, it's really, uh, really simple. So essentially, it's a mathematical formula that uh, takes the future divided by uh, the spot that you want to convert, and then you just calculate the ratio uh, there. There's another way of doing that, which is what I'm doing here, which is really adding the ratios to your, your chart. So your trading view chart. So we also have a video in the resources, but essentially trading view allows you to create a custom, uh, custom security, if you want to call it, which is a spread ratio formula between different assets. So I can simply go here and select my ES, and then I can then go and divide that by SPX, for example. And then now I have my ratio on one. So there is a slight limitation on the number of decimal that you see on this part of trading view. But as you can see at the top, you can actually add more decimals. So the ratio right now would be 1.0045. To change that, you can go under settings here and you can go under um, symbol and here you can select how many decimals you want. So you can have up to 10, 13 decimals. Uh, the only issue that TradingView has is that it's only gonna show you two right here, but no problem because by adding more decimals, you can actually see the value right here at the top. So again, this is a way of you calculating the spread or the ratio automatically. So in this case, we have the spread between ES and SPX, which is about 23.75 points. Here we have ES and SPY, uh, NQ and NDX. And again, always use this value at the top here, uh, NQ and QQQ, so 41.25. So when you go here and convert, this is where you're going to add your ratio in the setting section. So here is where you would uh, then click on apply and then select if you want absolute value in this case is spread, which means futures minus uh, spot. So yes, minus SPX. So you would have like, you know, 23 points or ratio would be a number 1.004, for example, and so on. So simply by adding that, then you can add the levels to the NQ chart or the uh, or the I IWM on RTY, for example. Yeah. All right. I'll pass it back to you. All right. So. Yeah. So that's that. That's the blind spot. So the blind spot is based on support and resistance. So on on my end. And, and everyone uh, asking me, hey, can I plot the blind spot also on other tickers like oil or, or commodities or something like this? The answer is simple, yes. So, but you must answer the question for yourself, what correlation you are looking for. Mm -hmm. I'm not an oil trader. I'm not a gold trader. I'm not a commodities trader. So for this reason, ask yourself, well, where you're looking for correlation, and maybe Fabio, you can you can say something about this. If you trade oil, I think Uzu is uh, uh, yeah. a good is something good for correlation. So yeah. you can maybe plot Uzu on your uh, CL future. So then you have to calculate the ratio or something like this. But you have to look for yourself for the correlation. What is the best correlation for you? Yeah, and I think uh, to add that, Patrick, we're going to come up with a new version of the indicator where you would have the flexibility to add uh, levels to basically any asset. So essentially, let's imagine that you want to do uh, NVIDIA on QQQ, right, or NQ, because there's a high correlation. So NVIDIA moves, the NASDAQ moves, right? So you'll be able to do that. Or Tesla, right? Same thing. So we are developing the indicator that will allow you to have uh, greater flexibility and obviously avoid the manual process that obviously Patrick is doing right now. So it will be much, much easier. Uh, so the pro, you know, the indicator is in the works. Hopefully we will have it very soon, but uh, stay tuned on that. Yeah, and and I, I can give you a, a last point about correlation. So we have on, I think on Wednesday, we have NVIDIA earnings. 
So what I'm doing uh, starting from tomorrow, uh, when I'm looking to, to the NQ, I'm plot also um, the NVIDIA um, uh, gamma levels or Q levels on my NQ chart, because now it's, it's become very interesting to see um, the correlation between the NASDAQ and NVIDIA, especially a uh, few days before earnings and few days after earnings, especially on the last day. Then we have the one day expected move, what could be very high on uh, on the NVIDIA. And this is really interesting to see um, how big can maybe the NQ going based on the one day expected move from NVIDIA in ratio with the NQ. This is only some, some, some small hack, but at the end, what I won't tell you with this is you can do whatever you want. It's based on your side. It's only an idea, the blind spot. How do you deal with this? It's, it's, it's part on you. And do you want to like and, set up, Patrick, maybe very quickly on kind of like how you plot them in the chart, like Simon? Yeah, that? Okay. yeah of course. So um, here, here's, the, here's the Discord. We go to the query boot and let's, let's put on SPX. So I'm using the SPX, copy, go to Google Keep, take in my, no my new notes. And this is the, the normal one, yeah? So what I'm basic, basically doing is I put on SPX, SPX to every level so that I know this is SPX, yeah? And then before I copy paste this, I add this one here and put in NDX. This is very important that you change the first name. So the first name is normally uh, SPX, but we want this to NDX. This is why we use it as ratio, and this is why uh, we <laughs> we manipulate um, the trading view indicator for the blind spots. And yeah, then and the, reason, the reason to answer that is really because the indicator right now only plots NDX and QQQ levels on NQ. Yep. So that is why Patrick is really using that functionality. But again, soon we will have the ability to do it uh, automatically. So yeah. And and for all of you, um uh, it's it's not <laughs> a habit for me that I uh I post every morning um all the levels that you can see here, NDX, SPX. Um, in the futures trading room that you have only copy pastes. I post also my ratios, but a ratio I'm using, most of the time I'm using the fixed ratio. You know it because I'm using it as support and resistance. And then the only thing what you have to do is copy paste, copy paste, copy paste, copy paste, copy paste. And that's it. And then you can plot this. I hope this is easy and simple to understand yeah. for all of you. Um, Jordan is asking if you can go over uh, what the handshake strategy, which is another term mm -hmm. that is going crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I will go on um, this in, in, in two minutes. Give me two minutes because I get many, many questions. And the question is about risk management. The question is about when to enter, when to exit, um, how do you use this based on your entries and all the stuff. And, and here's a general answer for you, Shams. First of all, it's only education, only what I tell you now. It's no financial advice. But at the end, I cannot give you the answer. So every, every, every trader is individual. Every trader has his own strategy. Every trader has his own risk management. How I'm doing this is easy and simple. So I make sure that my losers, that my losers are so small that this doesn't hurt me personally in my account or in my investor's account. And I make sure that on the other hand, I have sometimes few really big wins who make my investors and my personally account happy. But how many ticks or how many points I'm used, it's really depend on every day. It's depend on the volatility. It's depend on what area we are. So that's the basic general answer for everyone. What, what can I give you? I hope it makes sense, Fabio, so that we cannot go 
um, deep in this case. But we have to talk about this. No because this question is came every time, every day. Okay, so the handshake. Yeah. Now we came to the handshake. So um, after I was um, plotting um, the uh, the blind spots, I was seeing very, very often something. I was seeing, for example, this is a good example. I was seeing that we're going from SPX one day expected move um, to the uh, SPY one day expected move. If you be in scalper, if you be quick and, and maybe you, you set your limit orders and take profit orders here, then you can maybe trade from SPX one day expected move to the SPY one day expected move. This is what I call a handshake. This is a little tiny handshake. But if you start from the NDX, one day expected move max, maybe to the SPX one day expected move or the SPY one day expected move and you're short from here, maybe to here, then you have a bigger handshake. And also um, I'm looking always for, for the same thing. Um, so we have here um, the SPY core resistance zero DTE. And here, we have the SPY core resistance. So it's also a handshake. We go from core resistance zero DTE to the normal core resistance. This is also a handshake. So what is the handshake? The handshake is basically, it's the same, um, same gamma level, maybe from core resistance zero DTE to some another one core resistance or core resistance zero DTE or from one day expected move max to the next one day expected. It's always the pair of the same um, gamma level. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, and yeah. it's only, so with the blind spot, the, the blind spots are only support and resistance for me. And uh, uh, the handshakes, it's for me only and trade idea. Did I have to take this? Maybe not, but it's a good trade idea to have any idea where I can place trade and where I can place my take profits. That's it. Yeah, and uh, so Caroline missed this. So exactly, so the handshake means the same gamma level of two different assets. So core resistance to core resistance zero DTE on you know, NQ or core resistance on NDX to core resistance on QQQ. So, you know, that's why you named it basically handshake. Yes. It's like you, you meet your other friends and you say, hey, hello, how's it going? Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> and core resistance and core resistance are family. So they say hey together. So <laughs> this is why I call this the handshake. No nice. milkshake, it's the handshake. <laughs> that's great. All right. Um, do you guys have any questions on this topic? Um, Okay, so let me, yeah, so uh, Carolyn, it could be either the same level on two instruments or the same level on the same instrument. So core resistance zero DDE to core resistance on one instrument or two core resistances from two different instruments. So that's what you were thinking as they played out. Yeah, I can do this, baby. Uh, let's 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 do it really quick. So I have opened my my uh, NQ. Um, so what I'm thinking um, right now. So I'm thinking right now where the market is close is. So first we have a really strong day. So we have a really crazy day today. It was really strong, um, and at the moment. When we're looking at so how long we stay, we stay, I will say from 950 basically to now in a range. Of course, we're breaking a little bit out and we're breaking a little bit to the downside. But at the end, when we're looking like this, we stay in the range. And for me, it makes sense to looking for the NDX one day expected move max and the SPX one day expected move max. It's like a ping pong. We can trade maybe. Uh, from here to here to here to here. As long as we stay in the range, if we break out, then we're looking to the next level. If we break out to the upside, of course, the spike core resistance came into the play. 
because we was we was uh, boiling down here, and when we came came down, of course, the call resistance here came in play. But at the at the moment, I would say we are staying in the range. Simple and easy. Okay. Uh, would it be possible in the future to run a back test? Uh, absolutely. We are actively working on historical data and we are actively working on back testing and, you know, not only the one day max, but also the other levels. Uh, on different assets, obviously we're going to start from you know the most traded ones like SPX, QQQ, but then also we're going to do the same on stocks. Yeah. So let's let me share my screen one second because one of the questions that we get, especially on the future side, is how do I request the data on futures, right? So we use the same ticker symbology as uh, TradingView. So if you type ES on TradingView, you now have the arrow down here and you have uh, ES1 and ES2. So ES1 is what a uh, platform called generic ticker. That means that uh, by using the same ticker, so by always having ES1, the platform will automatically do the rolling to the next ticker. So in this case for ES, that would be a quarterly rolling. For CL, which is crude oil, it would be a monthly rolling. For gold, uh, I think is a monthly. Um, so essentially, you are you don't have to do the rolling yourself. You can use the generic ticker here, but at the same time, you can actually use the the actual future contract that you find in the platforms, right? So here you have the June contract, which is ES, then the letter M, 2024, ES, the letter U for September. So really, it depends what future you trade. Uh, you can either use the generic. So ES1 will give you the June contract right now, but in a, in a month time, it will roll into the September one. So you could actually only use ES1 or use the generic or the actual future ticker. So within the bot, uh, you have the option to request both. So I can actually go uh, into my bot and I can request ES1 and I can also request ESM 2024. So as you can see, the, the, the levels are the same, but the ticker is different. So if you were to import ES1 ticker into TradingView and you want to then open up the ESM chart, that won't, won't work because you need to actually specify the actual ticker. So you know, there's different ways you can do it. You can either request the future ticker here or the generic one. The problem with generic comes when you have monthly futures like crude oil or gold and when there is no options on those assets. So again, just to remind, we do gamma levels using futures option chain, but sometimes the investors are actually not trading options on the uh, next future contract. So in the case of gold, maybe investors are actually not buying option on the May contract, but they're actually using the June contract. So if I were to go on the bot, I would uh, probably be better off using the GCM 2024 instead of using GC1. And the reason is that right now on TradingView, you are actually using this contract, which is GCK for GC1, but the options are actually on GCM or GCN or GCQ. So sometimes it could be that the bot doesn't return any data, not because we don't have data, it's because there is no options activity on the next future contract. And that's why you need to use uh, the, the actual ticker rather than the generic. This problem can be on metals and crude, which have monthly expirations, more le uh, much less on the other ones. So uh, there is no issue on the indices or the bonds and so on. Yeah, great. And we have also some some question about um, about the levels. And I read this for you. There's a five hours gap from when market opens to when new levels are out, out for future. Do you trust using previous day levels for Asia session, Fabio? I will answer this also. Yeah, I mean, the levels are leveraging uh, the data when available, right? So when you look at options, um, open interest ch typically changes once a day. Uh, so that's a very important input on the calculation of the models. 
So uh, the reason why you see the data a uh, little bit delayed is because we need to get the updated uh, uh, open interest data. And obviously that's not real time. Uh, so again, um, I think there's, you know, there's no reason why you don't trust them because to be honest, those levels are reaction zones. So those are still in play for the next day because of uh, the gamma activity at these strike prices. So like, these are like really reaction zones. They're not like, you know, algorithmic, you know, minute by minute, you know, you, these are where the market is going to react. So, you know, they, they work pretty well. We do the same for in the season stocks and the data is end of day, but the, the levels are at play for the next day. So. Yeah. yeah. And, and this is something what, what I can personally confirm with my experience when I'm working with the Q levels. So I, I was seeing um, that when we get the new levels, it's sometimes it's better to, to change this um, 30 minutes or one hour before New York open because the old levels, so the old levels from, I mean, from yesterday, they are so nice in play. So you don't want to change them. And this is why uh, the, 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 biggest, the biggest thing is for the people um, to trust the levels. You have to trust the levels. If you want to trade the levels, you have to trust the levels. Mm -hmm. And and I can confirm most of the time, the the levels from yesterday are in place when it came to the Asian session and when it came to the London session. Of course, in the New York Open, you have to change this. But it's all about support and resistance at the end. If you be an options trader or if you trade the blind spots, at the end, it's everything. It's support and resistance or call it reaction zones. And you can you can see it easily on your chart if you're looking backward, if the support and resistance or the reaction zones making sense. If the answer is yes, then everything is good. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna answer quickly to a question from John. Uh, could you explain how I can get the mentor Q levels future indicator? Uh, so John, if you look at uh, the welcome section under the trading view uh, channel, you now have access to uh, the futures trading view. So simply click on that uh, link, add it to your favorite, and then uh, uh, the indicator will appear under your favorite section here. So you will have both of them. Uh, then Jordan, is there a plan to have live hedging data during the day? Yes, we are actively working on intraday data. Um, the goal is in the next release, which should be around July time, uh, to have intraday data on the major assets. Um, and then obviously we are looking to build um, you know, a web app, but that's going to come later in the year or, or in 2025. All right. I have also some questions about, um, well, for me. So one question is, do you even uh, lose a plotting actual NQ gamma levels or just as a ratio level? So at the moment, I'm I'm trading only the blind spots. So of course, I have also the futures level uh, as an indicator on some other charts. But I'm looking, uh, again, I'm looking always what gamma levels are in the play. And and again, um, I write this also in the notes. I'm looking only for the most important levels. So I, I kick out um, everything what is GEX. I'm looking only for the important levels. Um, but everyone is different and, and you can do it also manually, but at the moment I'm trading only blind spots because for me, it works perfect. Why I should change in working strategy? There's no reason. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. So a question from Pakot, um, how do you get the levels? Uh, so all the data will live within Discord. So let me go through very quickly once again. Uh, you go on the query bot and then you would type in your forward slash and then you can type in the word list. This will give you the list command and then you can add the ticker. So click on the command, the ticker word will appear. Type in MDX space comma QQQ SPX and you can have up to five tickers and then simply type enter. This will be returned and then you can you know, copy and paste this in the indicator input sec uh, section here. So within the indicator, 
you have the option to then paste the levels within one of those text boxes there. And then I get the question, do we use any other indicator at all? Shem, <laughs> it's, a, it's a really good question. So, but at the end, I'm looking also for, for other indicators, but what, what is on my side? It's the smooth moving average. Uh, you can plot this uh, on your chart. I'm looking also this because why I'm using the smooth moving average, because it's it's like an, an second confirmation. It's like an, it's like having a, a trend line. And also I'm, I'm looking for institutional uh, levels to have the bigger picture. That's That's everything. There's no hidden strategy or something like this, but my main strategy is um, the blind spots. Yeah, all right. So let's, uh, I'll go through Simon's question. Can you walk through in trading view adding the levels and ratio for one? I'm not sure uh, I'm doing it correctly. Okay, so let's uh, uh, go over the, not the futures indicator, but the Q levels. So if I go into the settings, I have already uploaded SPX levels here. So the first step is really to upload the underlying levels, so SPX or NDX. Then I can come here and I can click on the box. And then I have the option to have absolute value, which is spread. So future minus the spot. So ES minus SPX or ratio, which is futures divided by the spot. So ES divided by the SPX. Then I need to add a value. So if I use ratio, I can go back to my trading view here and I can go on my ratio here. So I can see that the ratio, the close ratio at the top is 1.0061. So I can then go back into my indicator and add My ratio here, 1.0061, click OK. And then now I can open up, yes. And now the levels will be there. Let me know if that's clear. Makes sense. Uh, for Bart, so can you review how you move the labels for each line further to the left? So with the futures indicator, you have the option to place the labels on the left or on the right. So here you have labels position, you have right or left. So if I click left, the labels will then be placed on the left side of the chart. So let me just open up the future. So yeah, exactly. And if you then click on uh, on left here, sorry, I'm having troubles with them. Okay, so they will be placed kind of towards the left, or you can control that to the center, to the right. And then you also have the label offset option where you can then, uh, where you can then basically uh, define how many bars to the right you wanna have the, the levels. So you can move the levels, you know, 50, 100 bars to the right hand side. All right. Um, okay, we have some other questions. Um... Yeah. Okay, I can answer this this really quick. So, um, but this is this is more uh, technical analysis. So, uh, mm -hmm. what that time frame do you use for your SMA? So, on the SMA fifteen, I'm using the one hundred thirty. Um, on the five minute, I'm using uh the fifty, SMA, and the one minute and two minute, I'm using uh the twenty SMA. But I'm not using the SMA. I'm using the SMMA. So this means the smooth moving average, not the simple moving average. <laughs> okay, so clarify. So it's it's a quite difference between the SMMA and the SMA. <laughs> I know it's hard, but it's a, it's a quite different. 
Um, dark pool, uh, you can Google this, you can find it everywhere. Um, and Patrick, with the modified data uh, for blind spots, how do you indicate the ratio or where in the indicator? So, um, yep. Fabio, maybe you can go again about this. Yeah, so the ratio will be here. So we will be within the settings, ratio or absolute value is spread. And so spread means one minus the other one, ratio is one divided by the other one. So you'd be able to add the ratio here. All right. support. Um, okay, so there's a question uh, where is there an instance where you know put support is above the core resistance? Uh, yes, that is possible. And uh, we can see this by looking at the net jax chart. So for example, if we look at the IA for today, we see that the put support is right here and the core resistance is right here. So don't consider support and resistance in technical analysis terms, but look at it as option positioning. So in the case of DIA, there's a lot of participants that are actually covering themselves at the 400 level. And the most, the highest level of put is at the 400 level. And then you also have a lot of other participants that are actually covering at a different core resistance level, which is slightly below that level. So it can be that, you know, put support and core resistance are not one under the other one and so on, because it's based on options positions and not technical analysis. I hope that's clear. All right. Yeah. Uh, so just to answer Barry, again, um, why is Patrick using the derived level? Because he's looking at correlation and he's looking at other signals coming from correlated asset, right? So, you know, you have the yes levels, but you also want to monitor how, for example, NDX is behaving, QQQ is behaving. So that could give you like an additional confirmation. So now you, with the indicator and with the new indicator, you now have the power to potentially add more uh, data points in one single chart to, to potentially get better better signals, I guess. Yeah. And yeah. also I'm working on to bring the uh, SQQ, SQQQ yeah. uh, as blind spot on the chart to see the uh, how the short sellers is giving pressure to the last. Yeah. Um, all right. So I think I wanted to maybe, so we have 30 minutes left or a bit less. I want to go over, uh, the option screener very quickly and show you some example on how you can uh, use those. So those can be found, uh, within the website. So once you log into your account, you will have the option screeners here. They're divided into three main categories. So gamma levels, volatility, and open interest. Uh, we're also going to release more advanced screeners in the next few months as well. So pay attention there. Uh, if we go on gamma levels, um, we have different ones. So we are basically taking the end of day data and we're screening for different levels like core resistance, put support, eyeball level, you know, core resistance, zero DT and so on. So if we look at, for example, the core resistance, zero DT, here you get uh, a list of stock that are matching the criteria. So this is the distance from the core resistance zero DT. Uh, this was a very interesting case. So we look at you know a list of companies, but let's look at JP Morgan. I was looking at that this morning. Uh, so now look at the levels, right? So the price open today, try to break above the core resistance and then can like drop to the downside. So as you can see, there are multiple important levels on one chart on the same level at 204, which is a lot of Jax level, gamma wall and core resistance, right? So those are reaction zones. The price is struggling to go above that and hence opens, tries and breaks down to the, to the downside. Um, we can do the same on uh, put support. So if I go here, I can go and look at my put support screener. Uh, actually, I was looking at put support, zero DTE. 
and I can see, for example, that this different asset, but there's one QQQ, right? So if we open up, you know, the QQQ chart, we can see how the put support today uh, acted uh, kind of almost as a support level for for the trading session. So the trading session kind of was here and then moved to the upside. So the the way you can use those um, screeners is really to find uh, inflection point or market reaction zones that could become in play for the next day. Um, there was another one here. If you look at core resistance zero DT, uh, one that I saw actually, where was it? Was Carnival? Well, actually, this one was the high vol level screen. So here we have Carnival, right? So the high vol level is typically the level that signals the switch, the change between positive and negative gamma. So this tends to bring volatility if you are moving to a negative gamma environment. So I was looking at this today. Uh, we were at this level. Look at how many levels are in the same level at about 15. And you know the stock, obviously, there was some news catalyst today, but the stock moved all the way high to the upside. Uh, you also have screeners uh, for potentially selling premium. So we have IV rank screeners, high implied volatility screener, uh, put correlation screener, and so on. So if we do high IV rank, for example, you wanna look at companies that are having high volatility, and then maybe those could be candidate for selling spreads, or you wanna look at companies that have uh, low volatility so that do, those could be candidate for potentially buying options. Um, All right. Questions on this or any other questions? Yeah, I have one question for you, Fabio, because I get I get also the message every time from, from some people who subscribe new, and I think it could be very interesting. Yeah. So what levels do you think personally are the most important one to watch where we have the best reactions? Yeah, so that's a very good question. So let's go and open up uh, NVIDIA. Right. So if we look at this chart, uh, what the net gex chart shows you uh, is really the net gamma exposure per strike. Right. So you want to see if there is more call or put activity at any given strike price. And then you want to identify those are reaction zones. Right. So the ones that are obviously more important are the core resistance, which is the one that you see here, the put support. The, then we look at the zero DTE levels, so core resistance zero DTE and put support zero DTE. Zero DTE for stocks really means the next weekly expiration. Uh, for asset that has zero DTE option like SPX and QQQ, then would be the zero days to expiration, so today's level. Those tend to really move and be a reaction zone because of their um, time to expire. So they tend to become very, very important. Then uh, the IVO level, it, which is really the change between a positive to negative gamma environment. That's very important because switching from positive to negative will bring more volatility. It doesn't mean that the price will drop or will go down, but it will mean that you will see more price swings during the day. So knowing that is very important. Uh, so the eyeball level is a very important one. Uh, the one day max and minimum, definitely key levels to monitor. Uh, and then if you want to start using the different JAX levels, also those become really important. Uh, also, when you have a confluence of multiple JAX level within you know, an area, that becomes a very important uh, reaction zone. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and the difference between the zero DTE and um, I would say the normal one, um, is there also some that if you can see, you see more more reaction on the zero DTE levels or on the key levels, like for example, as um, a zero DTE put support or only put support. Whereas, whereas from your experience, uh, better price action to expect it. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, so let me answer the question from Barry. So I sell premium using Strangle sixty ninety DTEs on futures option. Can you help me think through how the tool might help me with that? Absolutely. So uh, within uh, our models, we have something called the metrics. 
So I can uh, type in the metrics here and I can do it on, uh, uh, let's do it on SPX just for simplicity. This is gonna open up this kind of like uh, complex table and I'm gonna try and simplify it. But essentially what we're doing here, Barry, is really decoding the full option chain in the future and simplifying the data that you see to help you get an understanding of where the market could be positioned in the future. So here we go from zero DTEs, so one day to expiration, so tomorrow's expiration, all the way in the future up to a year or more. So if you are doing, for example, a 90 days, you could be looking at the September 20 expiration. So the first thing you wanna look at are the different columns. In particular, you wanna look at the JAX normalized and DAX normalized, that means how much JAX is expiring for that expiration. So how how many people are positioning? How much uh, you know? How much sentiment is there is there for that expiration? Then you want to look at the different levels for that expiration. And then we have this column here, which uh, not many users use, but I think is very helpful. In the same line of the one day expected move, here you have the expected move for that expiration. So if you go back to those ninety days. Um, you can look at the potential move of 300 points above and below. So that could help you basically, you know, place your spreads and, and understand where to position yourself. We don't have back testing on, on this yet, but we are developing that. So, uh, you know, just uh, uh, th this is another way of, of doing that. And we do the metrics on, you know, all the asset futures and, uh, and, and uh, stocks, uh, ETFs and so on. Right. Um, someone asking about um, Netflix, uh, which you shared um, this morning and the tough process behind it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so Netflix, uh, again, uh, we followed a news coming out from Netflix. So like, obviously, the first thing you want to do is look at Catalyst and then understand how the market is positioning themselves uh, on those assets. So essentially what we are um, doing that there is really looking at the net gamma exposure chart on Netflix. So following the news that we that we, we read, we are looking at uh, NF X. We're looking at the gamma exposure chart, which is the one that you see. So essentially what you're trying to understand from that chart is really how is the market position on the stock? So there's a lot of like call position at the 650 level, and there is not a lot of put activity here. We can also go back in time and understand how the position have changed uh, the day before. So as you can see, for example, you see a big roll up of calls uh, above the 650. So two days ago, we had a lot of uh, call positioning. So the core resistance was at the 620 mark. Uh, yesterday, with the data from yesterday, now we look at the 650. So monitoring those shifts in core resistance level is also important because it allows you to understand the sentiment on the stock, right? So a lot of investors are moving or are closing their calls or buying calls with a higher strike, so more out of the money, right? Um, and you can do the same thing going back up to five days. So you can see how the core resistance was, you know, three days ago, we were at 630. Now we're at 650. How was the data four days ago? We were also at 630. So the, you know, you see a lot of investors that have rolled position to the next, you know, level, which is the 650 level. Uh, you can also do the same with the metrics. So again, going back to Barry's question, um, on the metrics, we can also go back historically. So we can open uh, the, the table here from yesterday, then we can go back five days ago, up to five days ago, and you can also look at the change in JAX and DAX and all the different levels as well. We get also some, some other questions. Um, can the expected move help intraday prop futures trader? And can you give an example, please? Uh, yes, absolutely. So uh, let's go back to our website. So we have an article here on our website, uh, which is backtesting results of the one day expected move. 
So we are going to develop more and more of these documents. Uh, we're going to cover more stock. But essentially, what you want to see is kind of this. So we have about four years of history. Uh, we need to update it, but we, we haven't done it yet. But uh, essentially, we have about a 1,000 days of uh, trading. And what we are measuring is how many times the price of SPX closes above the one-day minimum. And we call that a success and how many times the price closed below the one-day maximum. And we call that a success. And the reason why we call that a success is because knowing that the price will stay within a range would allow you to uh, use advanced strategies like you know iron condors or selling spreads, or would help you also like uh, trade directionally. So if you, for example, are a trader or a futures trader, when the price reaches one of these levels, and Patrick, you can confirm that, we yeah. typically see a reaction. So we typically see a pullback. So if the price is on a downtrend, eating a one day minimum, you know, that could be a really interesting level to monitor for a potential pullback. In the same way, you know, the one day max level, you could also trade a pullback on that level. Or many times it also happens when we have volatile day that the break of that level is an inflection point. So it brings more momentum. So you can see that the price really moves very fast to the, the next level. Uh, but then, Patrick, you know, tell me how you use that data. Yeah, so th th that's a good question. Um, um, so personally, and 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 this is this is also some something how the blind spots um, uh, came came into my mind. So because if we're looking to the one day expected move, and we we seeing maybe on on the NQ or on the Nasdaq that that we we going now below the one day expected move. Um, then we are in an overbought or oversold area where we can maybe short. But for correlation, we're looking now to the ES and we see that we're not on the one day expected area. And for this reason is um, you you have to look first on the correlation. If booth assess uh, a booth or below the one day expected, and if yes, and they and they come back to this area, it's a nice short opportunity or long opportunity, depend on the direction. So I, I I like to say it's a little bit the ASI. It feels like an overbought or oversold. Um, and it gives you a nice opportunity with a with an, uh, good risk management to take advantage of it. Yeah. And uh, let me ask there's a few questions. Uh, Barry, so what time does the level update so stocks and indices we start calculating the models after 4 30 eastern uh typically all the data should be done by uh 9 p.m uh the asset the biggest asset are done very quickly so spx and all the large companies will be done by probably 6 p.m eastern uh and those levels are for the next day uh, futures are available at around 11 p.m and uh, and for Caroline, um, let us know if the answer was helpful for you. Mm -hmm. uh, if yes, say yes. If no, ask next question. So let's ask uh, a question from Pablo, which is a very good one. Um, should we consider the IVO level as a reaction zone or just as a change in volatility? Uh, the IVO level is a, a big reaction zone. And the reason is that uh, it defines the, sh the shift between positive and negative gamma. And again, we have an article on the blog here. Uh, but essentially, um, if we look at this chart, this simplifies how market makers or dealers tend to hedge when in positive gamma and how they tend to hedge when in negative gamma. But as a takeaway, in positive gamma, we tend to see a lower volatility, while in negative gamma, we tend to see uh, higher volatility. So, you know, when the price moves towards toward that level, then, you know, we start seeing reaction because if the price moves from positive to negative gamma and then crosses below, then you start seeing an increase in volatility. The other way around happens if the price goes towards a positive gamma environment where you see like a lower volatility when the price crosses that level. So you, yeah, you, you can use that level definitely as a reaction zone. Uh, and uh, yeah, this is where, Typically, we're we are shifting from positive to negative gamma. Uh, question from uh, uh, Boyer. So does so going back to Netflix, does that mean that the price should get to 650 and then reject because of market maker hedging? Uh, so again, um, nobody can predict where the price can go. 
uh, this is where basically the market is positioning themselves. So the option market typically serves as a sentiment indicator. So looking at the options position can help you understand, hey, why is why is the market positioning themselves on that level? What do they know that I don't? And uh, you can read the data from the option market. So uh, there's no clear answer, but again, the mechanism, yes, it could be a reaction zone. It could be, you know, that's why we call it resistance because of the way, you know, people that have bought out of the money cause might monetize them when the price gets to 650. And if they do, then the market maker no longer has to hedge. And therefore that could be, that could mean that the price could then, uh, uh, you know, go down at the resistance level. But, you know, that's, you know, nobody can predict the future, but we look at the option data and we try to define where are those reaction zones. And and let let me also add something to, uh, when we speak about the, the market maker. Um, you was you was tweet something or or mentor Q research was was tweet something. Um, it was about um, the most often misunderstanding misunderst from from the market maker when it came to the bid and ask spread. Can you say one one minute something about this so for the bigger picture for the people? Uh, yeah, sure. So I think what is important is. Uh... So market makers are more and more relevant in the option market. And the reason is really simple. You know, think about if you take NVIDIA, right? There are, you know, dozens of expirations in the option chain. There are hundreds of strike prices. So every option within the option chain could be thousands of securities, not necessarily will have a buyer or a seller on the other side. You know, if you are buying simple stocks, then most likely your transaction will be matched with a buyer or a seller on the other end. Uh, when that doesn't happen, then the market maker are there to provide the price. Uh, but with the option, you know, most likely, and I would say the majority of transactions are executed by market makers. And the market makers do not make money from the direction of the price, but from the spread. So they charge a bid ask. So they, 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 po they pocket the difference between the bid and ask uh, spread. And that's how they make money. So in order for them to not risk uh, their capital in the direction of the price, then, then they need to delta hedge. So they need to cover themselves by uh, implying an, an offset of trades that will help them limit the risk. And that's why we see that this level become reaction zones because uh, how the market maker has to protect themselves from price going above this level and how they are hedging and buying the underlying at any given time during the day. So, I mean, and also we do have a lot of documentation. So I think uh, under here, we have uh, a section on Delta hedging. We have a cheat sheet and we have uh, a lot of documentation that will help you understand why these reaction zones are becoming very important. And I think also, um, uh, yeah, you, you'll find also really good information uh, from the other ones who uh, we're in, we're in the uh, trading room, so they give also really good insights about this. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. So we have eight minutes left. Let's see if we have some more questions. Sunday. Okay, so how do you use the three-day expiry net jacks? Okay, so um, when we look at net jacks, which is the command uh, slash net jacks, we are looking at, uh, we have different charts. We have all expiration or multi-expiration. Uh, all expiration means that we look at the whole option chain. So we look at all the future expiration in the future, and then we calculate the gamma exposure based on those expirations. But we can also do the same thing uh, for every single expiration. So if we take the futures, for example, now we have a new visualization, which is, uh, sorry, wrong command, which is a grid. So now you have four. And uh, what we do here, and let me make it bigger a little, a little bit, we take four different expirations, and then we show you the uh, net gamma exposure for that expiration. So we have the zero DTE, so the next day expiration, the first one DTE, so the, the next uh, after this and that expiration. And then we also have uh, the expiration with the highest checks. 
and the expiration with the second highest JAX. So most likely these will be monthly expiration, so the next monthly. Uh, but those are very important because, again, if you're looking at more like a swing trading strategy, you want to understand the levels at that expiration in the future that could have an impact and could become reaction zone. So essentially, you can either look at the full option chain or you can look at every single expiration. And we have the two options there. Five minutes to go. And we have also the question, at what time does the one day minimum and maximum start? Um, so if, you know, they, so they would be, so the, the model right now is calculated at the end of the day. So they would, you know, work for the next day. So the data that you take in tonight or in the morning would work for the next trading session. So today's data will work for tomorrow's trading session. Yeah. Uh, Patrick mentioned institutional position. How do you determine those? So right now we look at, uh, um, we take in the, the full option data at the end of the day, and then we create those charts. So by looking at option volume, so we have a lot of different indicators here. Uh, we have uh, option volume, option open interest. And uh, what you're asking is probably related to intraday information when block trades come in. Uh, we're gonna start having intraday data soon, but uh, at the moment we are taking end of day positions. So looking at uh, an aggregation of end of day positions. Uh, how can we interpret the curve yellow line on the net X chart? Yes. Uh, so if we look at the net gex chart here, let's go back to our Netflix. So this is the curve of the gamma profile. And essentially, uh, when the curve starts to shift, that's when you start seeing the change from negative to positive gamma. And that's where you see, for example, the high level level. Uh, being here, which is really when the curve start to shift from negative to kind of like positive gamma. So, you know, it's important to understand the gamma curve. Again, uh, there's a lot of information on the website that talks about it. We also created a, an academy to explain how the, you know, different Greeks work. Uh, so you obviously need to understand how gamma and delta work, and then you will be able to understand how the curve can then be used to kind of like help you um, manage the trades. Uh, will, will we get a recording of this? Yes, absolutely. We'll upload it uh, later tonight or early tomorrow morning and we'll share with everyone uh, on Discord or via email. So question from John. Looking at the net gex chart, is there an easy explanation on how to identify a chart that tells a high probability story? Uh, so high probability, again, you know, when we look at the option data, um, you need to understand what is happening. So who are the people that are participating, right? Whether it's day traders or whether it's institutional investors. Uh, investors use options to either speculate on an upside move or a downside move or to protect themselves from the move, right? So when you look at the change in positioning, that's very important because it could be investors or institutions that are you know, protecting themselves from the market to go down if you see a lot of put activity here, or maybe they're speculating on a potential move to the upside. So again, there's no easy way to forecast the future, but you can use the option data to understand where the sentiment is going and where, you know, market is positioning themselves and how that is changing over time. So again, the shift in the levels means that there is more bullish or bearish sentiment coming in. And therefore you can have, you know, a data-driven approach that can give you better probability of success. Okay. Two minutes left, and then we are going to uh, stop here. We're going to have another session tomorrow and another one on Thursday. They will all be recorded. So if you can attend, uh, we will share the link. 
Uh, but I think, you know, again, thank you, Patrick, for joining. I know it's late. Um, it's late on your end. And uh, thank you for sharing uh, with us your blind spot strategy and uh, your insights. And again, there's going to be more for it, for this. So we look forward to, to the session tomorrow. Yeah. And everyone feel free um, to ask questions if something is not um, answered for you. So. Yeah, and then obviously you can find us, you know, in the chat, you know, just send us uh, uh, all the questions that you have. Again, we're going to cover, you know, if you send us questions, actually, we will cover them in the session tomorrow. Uh, it will all be recorded. So again, you guys can have um, um, can access that later on. But thank you very much for spending time with us and, you know, have a good evening or good night. And thank you, Patrick, and see you tomorrow. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Have a nice day. Bye bye.